Hi everyone, welcome to the live Monday Angel Message. I'm Rachel Skull Talk, Angel Medium and Energy Therapist. And today we're going to be doing a little card reading, but I also want to talk to you about why so many empaths, light workers, sensitives, people who are spiritually connected, feel can feel trapped and stuck, especially when it comes to things like money, abundance, manifesting your life purpose, and feeling as if you're in the flow of life. Now, do you feel like that sometimes, that there is an obstacle in your way? And it could be fear, fear of what could happen. It could be fear what could happen if you make a change. You know, if I make the change that I want to make, maybe people won't like me, maybe my partner won't approve, maybe I'll... Um, I'll lose money because I'll be running my business instead of um, working for a salaried job. So you keep yourself stuck in that place of always procrastinating about making the change because there is a fear that's in between. And that fear, you know, I class all the fear emotions as being self-doubt, insecurity, lack of faith, feeling not good enough, fear of losing, missing out, doing something wrong, guilt. All of the negative emotions come under the same umbrella as fear. So there are only really two energies in this universe, in this world. There is fear and there's love. And love covers the emotions like gratitude, peace, excitement, joy, happiness, love high vibrational energy so you're much more in the high vibrational and when you're in those emotions you're in those thought streams those vibrations you find it much more easier to speak to and hear your angels your own intuitive inner guidance you feel you're on the right track you see lots of signs you get lots of synchronicity and life just flows but when you're in the lower vibration of fear, all of those emotions I spoke about and those thoughts about what if, what if something goes wrong, catastrophic thinking, those fear emotions can be keeping you in the lower vibrations. So those are lower vibrating thoughts. So in the lower vibrations, the energy is much slower and it's much more, um, it's like wading through mud. So the obstacles that you think about, like I can't do this because this might happen or I can't do this because at the moment it looks like there's not enough money in my bank account or I can't do this because I'm afraid that I'm not good enough and that people will laugh at me. You start to feel literally the energy around you thickens and you start to feel like you're wading through mud and that intuitive flow the flow of angelic messages, the signs aren't as obvious to you because they're happening up here in the high vibrations and you're down here in the low vibrations. And look, this applies to anything, whether you're trying to heal something in your life, an illness, um, pain in your body, a relationship, you're trying to build something like your business, like maybe you're writing books and you want to be published or you want more people to see your message. Whatever it is that you're doing or you're dreaming of doing, you need to be in those higher vibrations, those higher, more um, divine emotions in order to, to get the guidance, to get into the flow. And so even emotions like worry, you know, what if this happens or I'm worried about my loved ones or I'm worried that this illness won't heal or it's something else, those things become your obstacles and the more energy and attention you give them, the more you get stuck in the lower vibrations. Fear, negativity, sadness, worry, and the, the more you make them a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, and it makes it harder for your angels, your guides, to come in and lift you out of that because whilst they're there with you all the time there is a bigger gap between you and them because you're in the lower vibrations of fear and so it's obvious to me as an energy worker that 
we, in order to overcome our obstacles, the very first thing that we have to do, whatever our obstacles are, is to start to climb that energy ladder out of the lower emotions and the lower vibrations and into the higher vibrations. And one of the ways that we do that is by releasing the thought energy because everything in this world, in this universe is energy. And every thought, every solid object, your body, you are an energy being. So we can start to release the, the thoughts, the fears, the concerns that we have and give them to the higher vibrations like the angels and are calling on divine spirit in order to transform and transmute those emotions. So you have to do the healing work. You have to say, right, I'm ready to release these energies that have been holding me back. I'm willing to change my thoughts and stop insisting that I have limitations. Stop insisting that I am beaten down by the obstacles or the challenges of the past. And you have to start to climb out of that vibration. And there's nothing that frustrates me more when I see people and, and you know, who are arguing for their limitations constantly, who have, um, who are always saying, I'm never going to get there. It's not worth it. I'm not good enough. Life doesn't work out for me. For some reason, I must be meant to suffer. That is down and out moaning myrtle stuff that comes from the lowest negative vibration that you can call up in your own consciousness and that is a sign that you have to take if you're believing those things there's a sign that you have to take responsibility and start to change that energy it is a sign that you believe yourself to be powerless that you believe yourself to um, not have the access to divine spirit to your own soul to and and that you don't believe that by changing yourself anything can change and there's two reasons people do that one is maybe they've been utterly beaten down by a lot of experiences in life they're carrying that heaviness with them and they haven't done enough work and believe me i've i've been in places like that and i've also seen it enough as a healer that sometimes the energy does get too heavy for us and we need a little bit of help in order to shift that energy. We can't do it all by ourselves. We are not meant to do everything by ourselves, not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so that could be one reason why you get into that negative self-talk and that, and when negative self-talk becomes what comes out of your mouth, to your friends, to your family, to strangers, to people on Facebook, to Instagram, on social media, then that's when there is a great big red flag going off and you have to pay attention to that because if you are doing it in here, it's bad enough. If you're doing it out there, you're literally projecting your negativity. You are cementing yourself into that negative place. Now, there is a little bit of a, a disclaimer with that. If you go to a therapist, if you go to a healer, if you talk to a friend and say, um, I really need to get this off my chest because I need a bit of help and I'm willing to change, I want to change, I just don't know how to, that is a, that's a healing process. You are you are saying, I'm stepping out of this bubble of negativity, I'm se stepping out of this um, bubble of self-punishment and, ne and negative vibrations that I'm creating, and I am going to reach out to a social worker, to a counsellor, to a therapist, to my doctor, to my best friend, to my sister, my brother, my mum, whoever, you're going to step out of that with an intention of healing. That is precious. And whether you speak it aloud, it doesn't matter because you are supported in this golden light of this person wants to heal. And that's when you'll start to see a change. But if you are speaking it and speaking it and speaking it and you're repeating it and people are saying, giving you advice, they're giving you numbers for healers, they're, they're making suggestions and you're not taking it in, you're just sitting in it. Poor me, poor me, poor me. I'm sorry for myself. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Then you are just cementing and creating a brick wall around yourself of non healing because everything that you send out comes back to you and you're actually making it bad for the people around you. And you need to hear that and start to take action. And it's meant with love, right? Because when you sit in the I am poor me complaining 
and not doing anything about it, then you are creating your own problems. And ultimately, that will it will come back at you in some way. You've, well, it is coming back at you because you're not changing and you're keeping yourself stuck. And so to some degree, we've all been there, right? And to some degree, we've all experienced a moment where you have said something and then you've thought, I heard myself say that six or seven times. I was laughing with somebody um, recently where I had noticed earlier this year that my preemptive text was saying tired, but when I was writing, I am. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to do something about that. It's coming up in my preemptive text. And I was, I was anemic. No wonder I was tired. So I went to ha see someone about it and got it fixed. So there's a point where your angels and your own spirit, your own soul is trying to get your attention. And it will, it will get your attention by going, oh, hang on a minute. But if you push that away, you go, God, I've said this 75,000 times to the same people and my friends look like their eyes are rolling back in their head when I, when I talk to them about this. That's a sign. It's a sign. It's not for you to get annoyed with them. It's not for you to um, feel bad about yourself. It's just a, a wake-up call of like, okay, this I've got to go get some healing. I've got to get out of this place of insisting that I'm limited and move forward because arguing for your limitations is never ever going to get you where you want to go. It will get you in um, a certain amount of, of um, attention but it won't be the kind of attention that lifts you up and, and helps you feel helps you feel good. It actually attracts the wrong kinds of people to you. So the one way that light workers, empaths, sensitives, people who are connected with the light, you really feel like you you understand you know spirituality, you feel connected to angels, you love crystals. When you read a spiritual book or um, a message, it lifts you up. You feel that connection. And deep down, you know that that is part of who you are and what you're meant to be doing here on the planet. And for some people, it's part of your you know, life purpose to do it as a career. For other people, it's not so much your career, but it, it's going to serve you in another way. But what I've noticed over the years is that it's the focus on the obstacles on the problem. So, so many light workers, for instance, will say, I know I'm meant to be a healer. I know I'm meant to be a psychic. I know I'm meant to share my gifts with the world. But, and when they say, but, they, they talk about the obstacle. I don't want to leave this job I don't like because I'm scared I won't get enough money. I don't want to do it because I'm scared of what my family and friends will say. I don't want to do it because I don't know if I'm good enough. And instead of moving through that, that becomes the boulder or almost like a rubber boulder that every time they hit it, they come back again. And, and it's a cycle. You just go, they come away from it and then they go, I really want to do this, I really want to do this, I really want to do this, hit the boulder and come back. So whatever that rubber boulder is for you in your life, what I want you to know, what the angels want you to know is that when you focus on the barrier, when you focus on the obstacle, then you will always stay in that cycle. You've got to no longer focus on the obstacle. You've got to see what's behind it. You've got to take a step anyway. Remember the, um, the saying, if it's going to be, it's up to me. You, in order to remove that obstacle, you've sometimes got to act as if it's not there. Because, you know, it's the same as saying, feel the fear and do it anyway, I guess. Because the obstacle is never going to go away. You know, you probably will never find out what your friend's family will say until you actually step into it. And then you'll probably realize that you love doing what you want to do so much that it doesn't matter what they say. And then eventually, like what happened to me, friends and family stopped saying what they said and they've started to accept it. And some people even love it and they're interested in it. But that took a long time. But if I'd have stayed back there in I can't do this because everyone's going to laugh at me, then I, would never, I wouldn't be here today talking to you. That It's the focus on what you think is the barrier that is keeping you back. And if you keep focusing on that, whatever we focus on grows, doesn't it, in our minds, 
in our thoughts. Um, it, 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 we add our anxiety to it, add our guilt to it, we add our self-worth issues to it, and we always see the barrier. So if you want to manifest the money, you want to manifest your career, you want to manifest a lover, whatever it is that you want, if you suddenly go into, which your brain will do, your mind will throw up, this is the obstacle, and you focus on that, and, and what most light workers will say to me when they want to be a healer or they want to get into their spiritual business, they'll say, I... I will do it when. I'll just do one more qualification. I'll just, when I've fixed myself and my issues, that's when I will do it. When I grow my confidence, that's when I will do it. And that's the obstacle because it's the deciding that if I, I can only have this if there's no obstacles, if I make myself perfect, if I overcome it. And that's not true because no one would ever do anything. There would be no... Um, entrepreneurs, there would be no trailblazers, there would be no authors or speakers or artists or singers in the world if everybody waited until they were perfect, until they'd overcome their obstacles, until they got there. So that is, that's what your message is, is today, is to start to decide that the obstacle, as big as it may seem, isn't real. And it's not the real reason you're not doing it. It's an excuse not to do it. And to go forward anyway and to start imagining what it's going to be like to be doing what you want to do, achieve, manifest the money, buy the house, receive whatever it is you're asking for with having just done it and not thinking, giving so much energy to the obstacle, give energy to what I'm going to do. Um, Somebody asked me today um, about the angels and how we can thank them. You know, I, I totally get that. Like, I don't know what I would have done without my angels intervening in my life so many times over the last 20 years um, since I became more conscious and aware of them and asked them for their help. And um, the answer to that, Narelle, is that your angels um, appreciate your gratitude because not only does your gratitude spoken and thought um, that you give to them, it opens your energy more, which allows them to give more to you. It makes you more receptive. So gratitude is really is important. And it's not that the angels want it in order to feel good about themselves or to, they don't need your gratitude is what I'm saying. But they do say that it's important for us to show gratitude no matter what is going on in our lives, whether it's the postman delivering a parcel to you, whether it's the angels delivering messages and guidance to you. They also want to congratulate you, Narelle, for following your guidance because that is a big step and it's it's gratitude that um, they give to you because they're saying you're, st you're starting to shift a lot of things in your life and that is something that your angels have wanted for you for a long time. So giving gratitude to your angels, but also giving gratitude to yourself. Um, and just keep doing what you're doing because remember that God and, and our angels and all of our spiritual team, they want you to be happy. They want you to be healthy. They want you to be peaceful. And they want you away from toxic situations and to heal you know, do your soul's contract, whatever that is, it's lifetime. And therefore, you, you listening to them and following the guidance and starting to heal your life is part of your, your soul fulfillment. It's what you're here to do. And that's, so there's never a point where God and the angels don't want you to be, to be on your path and happy and heal, healed and, and healthy that they're always working with all of us for that. And so that's really what we're all here to do. Like, okay, they're not as visible as we are, but they are, that's, they're on this mission with you. It means as much to them as it does to you. So that's that um, answered. Now I'm just gonna say hi to everyone who's come on. Hi, Patricia. Nice to see you again, Shell. Hi, Trish. Ida, morning Brooke, hey Trisha, there's two Trishas, or oh, a Trish and a Trisha, hey Angelina, that reminds me of Illaroo, thanks Angelina for hopping on, 
Kate and Jodie and Tyler. Lovely to see you here. So I have a lovely announcement for you before I pull the cards. Is that I'm going to start the 10 day um, a 10 day challenge tomorrow. So this is going to be about helping you to get in those higher vibrations with the angels. I would love you to share um, this video, or um, I'm going to put some some content up later letting people know about this 10 day challenge. So I'm going to do a video every day, shorter than this. And I'm going to be talking about a different um, subject around energy, therapy, self care, energy, healing, protection, um, helping you to shift lower energies and get to that higher vibration that we talked about, those emotions of love, peace, gratitude, contentment, manifesting abundance, helping you to understand yourself better and get into those higher vibrations. So I'm calling it a 10 day challenge. The challenge for you is to come on and watch those videos and share them. And the challenge for me is to do a video every day for 10 days. So there might be days like some days I'm very, uh, I've got very strong boundaries around my Sundays um, about not doing work unless I'm doing a workshop um, particularly, but what I might do is pre-record the weekend ones and then and then um, just put them up ready for you. So would you like to be a part of this? Let me know below in the comments if you'd like to be a part of it. I'll be putting it out on my newsletter. I'll be putting it out on my um, on YouTube and on Facebook. So what you'll need to do in order to be present for this challenge is to come onto this page which and like it and click get notifications. So this page is my Rachel Skull Talk business page. It's a page that you like rather than the page that you friend me on. I'm not gonna be doing this on my friend page because that's more my personal page. I'm just gonna be doing it here. Um, I will share it into the Empath Soul Tribe. So if you're already in the Empath Soul Tribe, um, I'd, I'd need you to like to be in the Empath Soul Tribe and in on this page as well so that you are first to get them. Facebook algorithms are really funny in that um, you, you might be on my page, but you might not get every notification that comes through. So you might miss the videos if you're not here. If you want to be sure to get them into your inbox every day, and you're not already signed up for my newsletter, go now to my website, rachelskoltop.com, and sign up. A little box will pop up, and it says for the Empaths Masterclass Replay. That's just a gift that you get by signing up in there, but you also get my weekly Monday um, newsletter where you get this video every Monday, plus um, an inspirational message from the angels, something teaching, and um, information about my upcoming events and, and work programs. So if you're not already signed up for that, I'd suggest that you go and sign up for that so that you can just watch these videos at your leisure and you can keep them in your inbox so that you can watch them again. They're going to be fairly short, talking about angels, energy, working with your spiritual guides, uh, um, bringing more positive energy into your life and helping you to stay more connected to that higher divine spirit. So if you'd like to be a part of it, um, you're most welcome. I'd love you to be there. I really want um, to reach more people, obviously, but I just it, it creates a great atmosphere when there's a lot of people online at the same time and we're doing these videos together. So if you've got spiritual friends, I'd love you to invite them. Um, to this, I'll be giving some free stuff away as well. So I'll be giving some um, some of my free meditations. I'll make them available to people who are involved in the challenge only. So invite your friends and um, share it on your pages. And I'll start tomorrow. And you'll be able to pick up those videos every day. So I'll do it as a live, but you can watch the replay if you're at work or, or if it's your night time over the other side of the world so thank you so much now i'm going to pull you a card um for today and just to get us into the week ahead we've had some really full-on energies um happening and we've it's really important that we don't just talk and about spiritual stuff but that we, we, we connect, that we make it a little bit of our way of life because 
when um, we're going through a period of intense awakening and it's becoming more and more obvious who's awake and who isn't awake. And, and what I find sometimes is light workers can sort of step in and step out, step in and step out. And at this point, it's like the energy can throw you around like being on, it's like being on the rapids of a river. So the more connected that you stay to your spiritual path, the more of these beautiful energetic downloads that you'll get that help you with your energy, that help you with your guidance, just like Narelle is getting lots of guidance at the moment and her life is really healing up because she's been getting this angelic guidance. It's about doing a daily practice. It's about staying connected and not just going, okay, yeah, I know about all that and, and, and I'm just going to go back to my other habits. It's it's about allowing, once you've recognized that there is a spirit, a spiritual world, that you are a spiritual being having a physical experience, it's then about following that path because otherwise nothing changes. And, and in fact, it can get a bit harder because if you're on a spiritual path but you're not really listening, that that throwing down the rapids without a canoe can feel even worse because spirit is saying to you like, hey, we're knocking on your door. We've tried to wake you up. You know we're here. You know about your thoughts creating your experience, but you're not listening. And so therefore there's no excuses anymore because you already know about the right way and you're not listening. And so it becomes, it becomes harder because spirit is trying to pull you back into the light. So recognize that, that no, no spirit being or angel um, from the light is, um, is punishing you if you're going through a hard time. God doesn't punish. That's a load of rot. It, it, we punish ourselves by keeping ourselves in our ego and keeping ourselves separate from the light. So, oh, okay. Yes. Now, isn't it funny that we spoke about obstacles? Because the card that we got, first of all, is Ganesh. Now, Ganesh, um, I'm actually doing a meditation for my Energy Skills for Empaths program group this Thursday, which is called Overcoming Obstacles with Ganesh. Isn't that funny? So Ganesh is the, is the um, deity, the divine expression through which comes through um, the being we call Ganesh, uh, that talks about removing obstacles in the path. And so, you know, as an elephant, you might see the elephant sort of barging through the forest and finding his way and, and sort of knocking over things that might be in his way. But Ganesh is also about abundance and creating and understanding the infinite nature of the universe and how when you get into that stream of knowing and understanding that, that you start to activate abundance. There's no more of the struggle. You start to recognize the flow that comes and how to access it. So this is saying to you, spiritual support is increasing, which is what I'm offering over the next 10 days, and from your spiritual team and obstacles are being removed so that you can start to move forward. So if you're feeling a bit stuck at the moment, this is the best thing that you can do is call on your angels, call on Ganesh, call on your spiritual team, start to build up your relationship with them, which is what we're going to be doing over the next 10 days with these um, lives. The next card is Kuan Yin. Now Kuan Yin is all about compassion, care, seeing things from a softer perspective you know, and that includes yourself, not beating yourself up for the mistakes of the past. Like, what is that about? There's no need to do that. Choose to be a force of love. And, you know, even if people aren't accepting you as a force of love, if you're being a force of love, what does it matter? Like, the love is there. Like, it's there and people can take it or not take it. But it, you have to be confident in yourself and not need that feedback. You don't want abuse, of course. But... um. This is about offering a helping hand to other people, paying forward, um, doing what feels right and for the highest good. So maybe, you know, if someone was asking me about thanking their angels, pay it forward, do something nice for someone else. Recognize that we're not just an island, we're not just a unique um, single being, that we're surrounded and, and what we do to others, we do to ourselves and what we do to ourselves, we do to others. Like it's it's 
energy doesn't just stay static. This is about moving you out of an, of an old vibration and into a new one. You have to move. Isis is the final card. This is the outcome card of doing the work, removing the obstacles, calling on the spiritual being, getting into the higher vibration, is that the manifesting flow will start to happen much more quickly. Look at the power in that card. Your dreams, visions and goals becoming a reality. So join me for the 10 day challenge starting tomorrow. There'll be a video every day. We're going to be making your goals, dreams and visions a reality by following the spiritual work that we have to do. So I'm really looking forward to it and I'm excited about it. But this is also, you know, if you don't want to join the challenge, you can follow the guidance in these cards about being more compassionate to yourself and others. If there's someone that's playing up in your life at the moment where you're thinking, oh my God, why are they being this way? Try compassion. Don't try compassion in order to change them. That's manipulation, right? Try compassion from your own perspective to start to shift the energy. The energy might change for yourself and might not change for that other person. But with yourself, you'll feel it easier. Start to not look at your obstacles as being obstacles that are immovable. Start to think about what, what, what can I do anyway, despite the obstacle. That's going to move you through. Call on Ganesh. Then start to put some energy into your vision. Vision is so important. Your vision, what is it that you want to create? Your vision is everything. Um, I am just about to put Uluru on sale. It's going on sale tomorrow as well. That is um, August 2020. And I'm doing it now because that means you've got 10 months to pay it off if you want to go on a payment plan. It's going to be a three-day program. And in that three days, there's lots of space, there's lots of journaling, there's lots of meditation, there's lots of meeting with the Anan Ananu people. We're going to be doing art creation. It's called sacred creating your sacred vision. That's what I'm doing this year, next year at Uluru um, in the centre of Australia. That's what my retreat is going to be. If you're interested in that, please get in touch because I know this one's going to sell out. I can feel it. Um, quickly so thank you so much hi Aaron JC I'm looking forward to that thanks JC I appreciate that I look forward to seeing you at the 10-day challenge hi Aaron um, Trish says I think they've been knocking on my door for a long time I think they have too I think they have too and it's about getting into this stream of love and light and ignoring those lower energy messages so thank you Ida thank you thank you so I'll leave you with that and I will see you um, tomorrow for on this page for the video. But don't forget, go to the Empath Soul Tribe. I'll put the link up and sign up on my website to get the weekly newsletter. And you'll be the first to know um, of everything that's coming out. You won't miss anything. I'll put all the links on the, um, on the comments. Lots of love. Mwah.